Amen. And from my heart, I like to just dedicate that song was for the people getting baptized too. Woo! Amen. He's into the grace and the changing us and restoring us back to him and you know, forgiving us. Amen. Amen.
don't know if you've walked through something in the last four months or if you've grown or if you've become like a little more stronger in God. Raise your hand if you've gotten stronger in the Lord through the trial, through these kind of seasons. Yeah, amen. So we can always say it is well with my soul, no matter what happens in our life, right? We can say, God, it is well with my soul. We're going to face things in life that we cannot stop. But we come running to God in his presence. And we come to Jesus and we pray and we just sit before him. He will give us the strength, give us the wisdom. He'll give us his presence that we can walk through. Amen? Amen. Don't forget, keep, keep going to him. Keep going to him every day. Amen? Amen. Moved by the sound of his voice, seas that are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken for my regard. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Come on. Through it all.
this blessing, this is, I don't wear, I know it's in the scriptures, but I don't know what scripture it is. But it's taken, is it in Proverbs? No. Numbers. So just, just open your arms. Number six. Just open your arms and just receive from the Lord this blessing. Through these troubles and trials and, and this, this life, um, we want to give blessings. And the Lord's giving blessings. And so we're going to pray this over you. I take it as a prayer. Um, say, Lord, bless you. Okay. Lord, bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. 
Hallelujah. Go ahead, clap. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, that you are for us. Father God, you are with us. Father God, you are in us. And you are around us, Father God. You surround us as the mountains surround Jerusalem. So your spirit dwells around us, Father God, and in us, Father God. We thank you for that. Holy Spirit, move in this place tonight. Lord, you're already at work, Father God. I thank you that you're moving in hearts. Lord, as we've declared your word, Father God, it is well with my soul, Father God. Lord, that you are my peace in the midst of the storm. Lord, as you laid in the bottom of the boat, Father God, in the waves tossed about, Father God, you are the peace. You are the peacekeeper. You are the way maker, Father God. Lord, you are the de 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 deliverer. You're the one who goes before us. Lord, you make a way in the desert places, Father God. Lord, wherever we're at tonight, Father I just pray for those who are in the battle, in the midst of the storm. Father God, you are the way maker, Father God. You're the one who opens doors and shuts doors, Father God. Lord, let us seek your face, Father God, with our whole hearts, Father. And Lord, as we seek your face, Lord, we'll begin to see the doors that open. And Lord, thank you for the shut doors that you give us, Lord. That you take us where you want us to go, that you lead us and you order our steps, Father. Have your way in this service tonight. Lord, let our hearts be moved, Father God, to action. Lord, let our words, Father God, our prayers come up to you, Father God, as a sweet savor in your, your nostrils, Father God. Lord, for in your presence there's fullness of joy. Let us be worshipers, Father God. Lord, as we worship you, you inhabit the praises of your people. And we thank you for all that you're going to do tonight. We thank you for all that you will do in our hearts in this week. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good stuff. Good, good stuff. I did a family funeral today, and every time I do a, it doesn't make a difference if it's for family or for anybody else, anytime I do a funeral, I always think about this crew. Because you, me, we have no clue when we're going to take that last breath. Cool thing about this is she passed away in her sleep, so that was a good thing. But I agonize over some of you sometimes around here because I just know you ain't saved. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, there's only two places you're going to go. You're either going to spend eternity in God with heaven or you're going to be down in hell for the rest of your life, and you ain't going to like it down there, I guarantee it. The big joke is, well, all my homies are going to be down there. Well, you don't want to be with all your homies down there. I'll guarantee you that. And if you're looking at what's going on, not only just in the United States, but look around what's going around the world, things are coming apart in the seams. So who are you looking to for your salvation? Who are you looking to for your strength? Who are you looking to for your peace? Who are you looking to for your comfort? If, it's, if you're looking in it for your, your wife or your husband or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your money or your car, or you know what? You're looking in the wrong joint. Everything comes, everything comes, everything comes from him. You know, some of you are so reliant on moms or dads or wives or husbands or, or jobs or I look at the crew today that was there and they lost dad here a little while ago and then they lose mom just boom like this and 
when your hope, your trust is in people, people are going to let you down no matter what. If I haven't made you mad around here, stick around. I'll make you mad sooner or later. <laughs> it's true. You know what? Has your, if you're married, has your husband or your wife ever made you mad? If, if no, well then, come talk to me because you're sleeping the whole time. <laughs> I'm going to get back into the Hebrews 12 again, but I'm, I know what I'm going to be doing when I'm on vacation here is I'm going to be studying about who we are in Christ. We need to know, we really need to know, especially now, who we are, who, who am I in Christ? And you know, I'm looking at that today as I'm watching our crew and, and listening to the stories and and different things and if I'm not rooted and grounded and planted in my faith in Jesus Christ any little thing that comes along can blow me off track anything anybody watch the news this week anything can blow you off track Sometimes my wife says, why do you watch that? Well, I want to know what's going on, and I want to be prepared, but does it make me mad? Absolutely. Absolutely makes me mad. I even had her mad last night. But when I go and lay down, I got to remember, again, my hope, my trust, my everything is in him. So even when I get mad at the circumstances around me, the trials around me, the I've got somebody who calls, I probably shouldn't say, well, I'm going to say it anyway. I got somebody who calls the church sometimes 14 times a day. And leaves a message till the message runs out and then calls right back. <laughs> and it's not, it's not, Lump said it best, it's not as funny as you think it is. Because it's, it's really not, they're in a, they're in a battle with the enemy, and the enemy's winning. And they let the enemy take them and run with it, and then they call and tell me all about it. And there's nothing any, can I just tell you one thing? There's nothing any one of us can do for somebody else. Only Jesus can set you free. Now, can Nona comfort me, love me, do all that? Yes. But you know what? She's not my Savior. Hello? You better get rooted. You better get grounded. Quit playing with this and actually get in it and read it and ask God to show you some stuff. I mean, we're having a blast with this revelation study that we're doing. And things are going, woo, you know, woo. <laughs> the pandemic that's going on, do you think that's just all of a sudden just going to go away? You know what? There's going to be, if it does go away, let me tell you, let me tell you the great news. If it goes away, something else is going to come. How about that make your day? So get in here. Get grounded in here. Don't go to hell going to church. Did you hear me? Don't go to hell going to church. Get in and grab Jesus by the hem of his garments and hang on for the ride. Because when you do come to Jesus Christ, you're going to go for a ride. 
And anybody that tells you it's all going to be peaches and cream is lying to you. I keep thinking of this story. Some of you have heard of Jesse Duplantis. I, I, I love Jesse Duplantis. He's just hilarious. He was telling a story when he was a little kid. And he was talking about who's always behind you. Who's always with you. Who's always behind you. And he was talking about a story of him and his brother. There was a kid that, I guess he's five years old, smoking cigars and all this. And just just a mean little kid. And his dad was mean and everything else. And, and in the process... They decided they were going to jump this kid and shove him down an outhouse toilet. So in the process, in the process of this thing, they get a hold of him. And, you know, if you know or have heard of him, he is, he just, he's funny. He says, we can't get him down there because we've got one leg. It's a two-holer, he says. He's got, got the mama holer. No, he said it was a three-holer. He's got the mama holer, baby holer, and the, and the daddy holer. And he said, we had one leg shoved in one hole and one leg shoved in the other, and we couldn't get him down in there. And the whole time he's screaming. I think I'd be screaming too if somebody's trying to shove me down at the outhouse. <laughs> and he said, all of a sudden, he hears this roar from behind him, and it's the dude's dad, and he's got a pipe wrench in his hand. And he says, I'm going to kill you, talking to Jesse and his brother. And he says, <laughs> I can't, what's his brother's name? That don't make any difference. Anyway, he took off running. And he yells back at him, run, Jesse. <laughs> and he said he just froze. He was so scared, he just froze. And this guy keeps coming at him. He says, I'm going to kill you. And he says, and all of a sudden, he hears this crack. And it was his mom had just loaded a shell into a 22 rifle and said, you touch my boy, I will kill you. And he said, boldness all of a sudden come on him. And he said, you know, he started doing his little, you want some of me? And his dad pulls up and sees this whole situation going on. And his dad was a preacher. And uh, he's like, God, I can't think of her name either. But he, he called her Ma, too. He's like, Ma, drop the gun. And the guy looks over and says, you think she'll shoot me? He says, you touch that boy, I'll guarantee you, you'll be dead. <laughs> the whole purpose of this story is, who's behind you? Jesse was froze to the ground till all of a sudden he hears a little crack. And he turns around, look, and here's Mama standing behind him with a gun that's ready to use it, and all of a sudden what? Boldness all of a sudden come on. So why don't we, when we know, if we're a child of God, we know he's not only behind us, we sang it. He's behind us, he's beside us, he's in front of us, he's within us, he's over us, he's under, he's everywhere. Why are we afraid of all this other stuff that's going on? All the circumstances that are going around, all the different, if we'll get focused, there's that two-letter cuss word, if we'll get focused on Jesus Christ, know that we're his child, know that we belong to the kingdom of God, you will act, say, and do things differently. Because that fear of God and not the fear of, oh, my God, he's going to strike me down. The fear of disappointment. I don't know about you, but this last, it's been a couple of weeks, three weeks, the things have been crazy. Just crazy. <laughs> and I'm thinking, why am I doing this? And then I show up for devotions in the morning, and I watch the boys, and I listen to what's being said in amongst them, and I get this little, that's what you're here for, stupid. And then somebody gets lit up, gets saved, gets all fired up for Jesus, 
ready to get baptized, got a testimony that will just knock your socks off, I get a little, that's what you're here for, stupid. Sometimes we get so carried away with, you know what, this is all messed up because I ain't even going to get to this. (laughs) Sometimes we get so carried away with, with what? earthly things but I mean with me it's people sometimes people that just get come on huh the wrong boys Fred Flintstone (laughs) not the angel on this side don't do it Fred some of you are way too young to know what I'm talking about (laughs) and Got the devil angel sitting on this side telling him to do the wrong thing. And be honest. When that's going on, what do you really want to what do you really want to do? This little one over here with the horns. Just go ahead and say that, JT. Just go ahead and do that, JT. It's okay. And I'm thinking for about two seconds worth, yeah, baby, that'd be a great idea. (laughs) Until I get the two by four. And then it all comes back to what? My reverential fear of God. And if you got that reverential fear, you got the Holy Ghost living in you. If you're a child of God, you have the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead living inside of you. Can you get get that through this cranium part here? You've literally got the power of God in you. And so i got to ask myself sometimes, so why do I do this? When Paul says, you know, I do the things that I wish I wouldn't do, and that's in Corinthians too, I think. Is that Romans? I keep doing all that stuff I don't want to do and do the thing. Why don't you go ahead, why don't you guys get ready for, let's get ready to baptize her here. John 3.16 is just a, almost everybody in the United States knows John 3.16. It's at every football game, it's at all the different, everybody can quote John, I won't say everybody, a high percentage of people that live in America can quote John 3.16. But what does that really mean to you? For God so loved, it says the world, but take the world out of there, put your name in there. For God so loved J.T., you put your name in there. That he did what? He gave. He gave. And it didn't cost you or me a nickel. He freely, Jesus freely went to the cross. You know, I love the scripture where it says he could have called down 144,000 angels just to set him free right there. Boom. Could have had everybody laid out. But he willingly went to the cross for us. What does that really mean to you here? What is, what is that going to mean to you tomorrow morning when you get up? Actually, what's it gonna really going to mean to you? Well, if you've got to go to work tomorrow, but what, are, what is it really going to mean to you Monday morning when you've got to get up and go to work? Here's that two-letter cuss word again. If you've got the power of the Holy Spirit,
Holy Spirit living within you, we should be willing to give like Jesus gave, give like God gave. You might be the only Jesus somebody will ever run into. And you say, well, what do you mean? Well, Jesus is living in you. If they see your actions, your words, everything you do, if you're acting like a Christian, they might want to know what's going on. What, how, how does that all work? Everybody's all Twitter-pated about this stuff except you. What's up with that? Well, my hope, my trust, my everything is in Christ. Well, what about all this corona stuff? Well, stick a lime in it and... It's all good. You say you're not worried about it? To tell you the honest God truth, I'm really not. Now, can I catch it? Yeah, I guess I could catch it. Can any of you catch it? Yeah, I guess you could catch it. But why are we all fearful of catching it when you have the power of the Holy Ghost living inside of you? She's there. We're praying. Hey, man, come on in here. Right, you ready? There we go. We don't have any volume though. Can we start can we start over, Bri? <laughs> I love her I love her smile. So did you hear one name that got mentioned a whole lot in there? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did this, Jesus Christ did that, Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And first time I seen her walk in, and I come up to find out she's known Polly ever since she was little. He lied to her and told her his name was Mike. So she thought the whole time that his name was Mike. God is so amazing that these two meatheads both find Jesus. Amen. And now become child of the living God. So I'm excited. And it's our pleasure to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah! Woo, girlfriend, that's what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen, amen. Look at that smile.
I love her smile. I mean, it's just from ear to ear. Amazing. Amen? I don't know if you got nothing out of tonight or not. I do love you guys. That's, I think that's what my hardest is to watch and it's like, come on, sinner. So I'm just going to pray and get out of here before I get myself in trouble. So, Father, I just thank you for this evening. I thank you that people are taking steps to get closer and closer and closer to you, Father. I pray we just continue to surrender our lives, put our trust, put our hope, put our all in all in you. For you're the one that can set us free. You're the one that can deliver us. You're the one that can heal us. You're the one that you can do anything you want, Father God. And I just thank you that you are my Lord and my Savior. And I just pray for each and every one in here tonight, Lord, that that is their statement also. So if you haven't asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, I'm just going to add here the simple prayer. It's Father, in Jesus' name, I know I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life, come in, to just take over my life. I repent of all my sins. I ask the Holy Spirit to come in and lead me, to guide me, instruct me in your ways. I put my past behind, and I look forward to the future walking in the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you for saving me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. If that's you tonight, come talk to some one of us up here. We'll be hanging out here for a little bit. Other than that, God bless you. We love you. We'll see you next week. I was doing everything I could. I turned my life over to Jesus. Sure. Yeah. My name is Krista L. Marcy Beck. When you turn your life over to Jesus Christ, May 30th, 2020 is the day I turned my life over to Jesus. Short before you came to faith in Jesus Christ, I was doing everything I could to get my drugs and did not have a care for my life since my mom passed away. And so I fought with Jesus often. How and why are you turning your life over to Jesus Christ? I turned my life over by getting sober and asking Jesus to help me change my ways because I no longer wanted to follow my mom's ways anymore. What's happening now with your relationship with Jesus Christ? I am now going to church and learning to pray and talking to Jesus more than I have ever in my life. And since then, my life has slowly changed for the better. I renounce my past life and accept and receive the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ over my life. I give Jesus Christ rule and reign over my life.